Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to Christchurch, Bangkok. Do please do come in and uh, come and take a seat. What a beautiful day today. Every day is a beautiful day in Bangkok. But I just want to say welcome to everyone. Welcome to those who are regular members here. Welcome if this is your first time or if you're a guest or a visitor or you're just passing through or you're newly arrived in Bangkok. I want to say a real warm welcome to you. God bless you. Welcome. And uh, also welcome to everybody watching online as well. Uh, Please feel part of the church family here as well, and it's great to have you with us too. So God bless you, welcome, and today is, uh, or in fact on Friday was was Mother's Day uh, in Thailand, and so a little bit later on in the service, after our first songs of worship, we'll just be having just a short focus on that, Uh, but I just want to say again, God bless you. I'm going to start with a a couple of verses from the Bible, from Philippians 2, verse 8 and 10, just as a call to worship. And this is what Philippians 2, 8 to 10 says. It says, Therefore, God exalted Jesus to the highest place and gave Jesus the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Isn't that great to know? God has placed Jesus in the highest place and Christians are those who seek to follow Jesus Christ as their Savior, Lord and King. And that's why we're all gathered here this morning to place Jesus uh, as number one in our church, in our lives, in all that we are and do. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much that there is no higher name, there's no greater name, there is no other name, there is no other God apart from Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, that Jesus has the highest place and that one day every knee, every knee will bow, every heart will bow, every spirit will bow to King Jesus. And Lord, we come this morning gathering together in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we too choose to place you number one over our lives, number one over our church, number one over this nation, number one over every difficulty or trouble or trial that we might be going through. And Jesus, I ask and pray that you would come and draw near to each one of us during this service. Would you come and speak to us? Would you come and encourage us? Would you come and lift us, Father God? And may we be unrestrained in giving praise and honor and glory and worship to Jesus, our Lord and Savior and King. Amen. So, God bless you and welcome. And welcome also to those in the Lee Hall. I know you're just across the way, uh, Ali, here from us, but you're most welcome as well, and God bless. I'm going to invite us to stand, and the musicians are going to lead us in some songs of worship, and let's worship God from the depth of our heart and being.
Father God, we just say amen to the words we've just sung. What a powerful name. The name of Jesus. The name above every name. Oh Lord, I ask and pray that even this morning, Lord God, that you would quicken our hearts just to realize how significant, how amazing, how incredible, how awesome you really are. And Father, may may we be quick to praise the name of Jesus to worship the name of Jesus, to point others to the person of Jesus. You are the life-changing God. You are the only God who can transform our lives, Lord God. So we stand in your awesome presence, as one day we all will do. But Father, while we have breath on this earth, may we give everything we have to worship you, to serve you, to live for you, to love you, to get to know you better, Lord God. It is the most important activity of our lives is engaging with you, Lord Jesus. And Father, this morning, we choose to engage with you, to seek to draw close to you, draw near to you. And Lord, I pray you will continue to speak to us, Lord God, throughout this service, in the quietness, in the prayers, in the talk, as we share communion, Lord God. I pray we might have meeting points with you, Lord God. 
So draw close to us, we ask and pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. And uh, as I mentioned, it's um, in Thailand, Mother's Day was celebrated uh, yesterday, uh, sorry, yesterday on Friday, and so we thought it would be good to acknowledge that, you know, in, come, come the front guys, come and line up along the front to start off with, and then I'll, we'll tell you what to do. Thank you so much. Come and line up along the front. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Great, and I'll show you, we've got two things here that in a moment uh, we're going to be given out to you, so children are going to go and give them out. Can I just have one example of each? Thank you so much. And one, can I just grab one of those? Okay, thank you so much. Fantastic. Great. So, as I just mentioned, it's, it's you know, we obviously want to acknowledge Mother's Day, and in Exodus 20, uh, the Ten Commandments, do you remember it says... Um, one of the commandments says, honor your father and your mother. And this morning we want to honor uh, all the mothers that are among us and those watching online as well. Sorry, we can't physically give you one of these. But, um, and so what we're going to do is, I've got a little Mother's Day quiz, biblical quiz. So while the children wonderfully come and give you one of these fantastic hearts, all made by pranker, so well done, and, um, and also these, one of these wonderful flowers, thank you Patty, uh, not actually made by pranker, those flowers, but let me just give you that back, I don't want you to leave you short, and what we'd like to do is make sure that every, um, every woman who's here, so whether you're a mother or whether you're not a mother, it doesn't matter, we've got plenty to go around, so there's a, 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 a flower and a little heart to every, each of the, the ladies and women in the church from 18 upwards. So, um, and if you haven't got one, um, well, I'll make sure that you do by the end of the service. So, do, do a couple of you want to go down that side? A couple of you down that side, and other down, or Patty, you, you be in charge. Uh, and thank you so much, Patty, for organizing it. And while this is happening, a little Mother's Day, great. So, are you happy to go around there and just help to give one of the flowers to everybody? Yeah? Just go for every, every, Every lady in the church, make sure everyone gets both, both a, a rose and a heart, okay? Rose and a heart. And while this is happening, I'm going to leave Patty to be in charge of uh, um, arrangements. And we really thank God for Patty. She's been doing a fantastic uh, role in the church office. So we really thank you for Patty. A little quiz just coming up. And the first question is this Who is the first mother mentioned in the Bible? Just somebody put your hand up. Call it out loudly. Let's see if it's the right answer. It is. It's Eve. Okay. Okay, next, next question. Whose mother-in-law did Jesus heal? So it's a New Testament question. One of the... Uh, mother, Shara, go on. Pardon? Peter's mother-in-law. Let's see if she's correct or not. Peter's, Peter's mother-in-law is right, right answer. Well done, you've got 100% so far, church, so well done. Okay, maybe a younger person might get this one. Whose mother placed her son in a basket of reeds, of, of bulrushes? I'm going to come down the church for this one, a little bit further to the back. I've got a few hands going. Moses, let's see, is it the correct answer? It is the correct answer. Moses' mother, absolutely right. Well done. Okay, how many more have we got? I think we've got one or two more, maybe. Let's have a look at the next one. Okay, Old Testament question. What was the name of the mother who took her son Samuel a little coat every year? Wow, there's, a, there's strong answers down the far right-hand side. Anybody else got an answer? Don't be shy. One or two theologians among us. Hannah, is it, let's have a look and see. Is it the correct answer? Yes, it is the correct answer. Hannah. So, Hannah it is. Is there one more? Yes. Okay. Last question. And you've got 100% so far, guys, so you need to get this one right. No pressure. 
Which young Christian did Paul commend for having the same faith that his mother and, in fact, grandmother had? Anybody know? Which young Christian in the New Testament did Paul commend for having the same faith, Christian faith, that his mother had? I'm going to, someone got the answer? Yeah. Let's see if it's the correct answer. Timothy. Hey, church, well done. You 100%. Yeah, give yourselves a little round of applause. Uh, <clears throat> each, one, each one correct. So, well done. And, Paddy, how's the, uh, how's the deliveries going? Yep. Has, I want to just ask a question. Any female here in the church who's not got a flower and a, and a heart? Has anybody who hasn't? Oh, yeah, the choir, the choir, guys. Yeah, come on, the musicians. Hey, <clears throat> anyone else at all, please, I want to make sure everyone's got one. Everyone's got one. And then in a moment, I'm going to say a prayer and just release the children for some other activities. Can a couple of you come up and make sure that all the musicians have got one? A heart and a flower. Have we got any left? There were plenty there, so I think, yeah, plenty, looks like. Great. And there are one or two left, so if any of you have a... Yep, great. Great, they're long. Yep. Wonderful. Fantastic. I think we've just got there's just someone just come in there just on the your right. Just 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 along the right on along at the very end there. Great. Just want to make sure everyone has. Yep. Aren't they beautiful? And I want to say, again, thank you to Patty and Pranka for just uh, organizing and masterminding that. And thank you guys for all your delivery work. Thank you very much. <laughs> if, uh, if Grabber any, gets short of, um, short of any delivery people, I'm sure they'd sign you all up. So thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Thank you. What I'd like to do now is just say a prayer, a uh, prayer for our mothers. And just to let you know, for the children, uh, there are... For the younger children, there's a little place at the back of the Lee Hall that you can take if you need to, and there, there is in the prayer room uh, some uh, Christian videos and things like that that uh, you can watch. Normally, we have a big Sunday school activities happening, but for August, we've taken a break, so we're giving the Sunday school teachers a break. So, but those are possibilities, or of course, your children are welcome to stay in church, whichever you would like. Just have a word of prayer. Father God, we want to just say thank you so much for, for mothers, Lord. Mothers right across the world in every nation, we want to say thank you. Thank you that being a mother is such a significant calling and such a significant gifting. And Lord, I ask and pray your blessing upon every, every mum, those who are really excellent mothers and those who find maybe mothering or parenting more difficult, Lord. I just pray your grace upon each one. And Father, those of us who have mothers still alive or maybe no longer alive, or maybe we, we don't get on so well with them, Lord God, I ask and pray, Father, your blessing upon every mother. And Lord, I just ask, I just again want to say thank you for the gift of leadership that every mother has. And we ask and pray your blessing, your anointing, and especially every mother in this church, Lord God. We just commit them to you. We thank you for them. And Lord, as it says in the word of God, honor your father and mother. We do that this day, Lord God. We also pray for um, every mother in the nation of Thailand, Lord. Asking and praying you'll give each one grace and skills, Lord God. And we thank you for the queen mother as well. So, Lord, we ask all these prayers in your precious and your mighty name. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. Just while, before we um, move on to our Bible readings and things, just want to just do one other thing, which we're going to pray about as well, just in a moment. And Alpha is uh, happening very shortly. We've got an Alpha course uh, coming up starting on the 25th of September, Sunday the 25th of September. So it's going to be through in the Lee Hall. It's going to be an in-person alpha, not a, an online or Zoom alpha. And 
I would just really like to encourage each and every one of you to really be thinking and praying and asking God, who might you want to invite along to the Alpha course? So the Alpha course, as it says on the banners outside the church, it's an opportunity to find out about Jesus. But it's particularly designed for those who aren't Christians, those who are seeking, or maybe they're atheists. It doesn't matter. Everyone is welcome. But it's particularly aimed at those who are not yet Christians. And we'll start off just with a little bit of food. We'll then have an alpha talk. Who is Jesus? Why did Jesus die? How can I be sure of my faith? One, how should I read the Bible? One, how should I pray? And many others as well. And then after that talk, there's an opportunity to get into groups, and people can just share uh, whatever they might like to. And if they don't agree with what the, the speaker said, they can say so. Or if they think, I think Jesus was a spaceman from Mars, they're able to say that. But it's an opportunity, and, and I have to say, over the quite a number of years that I've been a pastor, probably Alpha is the most significant way that I've seen people come to faith in Jesus and keep walking with Jesus. So actually remaining in the church as well. So it is a wonderful opportunity. And I just, we have lots of these invites here, postcard invites on the front. It says the Alpha Course, an opportunity to find out about Jesus. On the reverse side, it's got a map of where it is here at Christ Church. Starting at 12, it'll run 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. every Sunday, starting from Sunday 25th of September. So please, please do be thinking. And I'm just going to encourage us, exhort us, and challenge us to invite at least one person to Alpha. Just imagine, I don't know how many people there are here today, but if each one of us invited one person along, A, that would be great because we'd be really packed out in the Lee Hall, but just imagine we would double the number, assuming each one perhaps came to faith in Jesus. How many more, pe- how many more people would come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? So it's a great outreach opportunity. And pick, pick as many of these up as you think you can give out, but I'd rather than just think, oh, I'll let someone else invite somebody to Alpha. I'm just going to suggest we have a moment of quiet now. We just allow in the quietness just God to put maybe one person. If he puts 10 or 15, that's great. But one person, at least one person, should I say, on your heart that you might invite along to this coming Alpha course. There's plenty of time to give the invite. Ideally, give it in person hey, you know, come and check us out, you know, and if you don't enjoy it, you don't have to stay, but, um, but why not come along? It, it'll be good. And uh, so a moment of quiet, and then I'm going to pray after that, but let's just have a moment of quiet. Just close your eyes. Just ask God right now, God, is there one person that you want me to invite to this Alpha Court? Are there 15 people you want me to invite? Just ask the Holy Spirit just to put one person on your heart right now. And as they do, then you just pray for them, even now. Just pray for that person. God bless. It might be a friend. It might be a family member. It might be a colleague. It might be a, someone at school or college. It might be a neighbor. It could be anybody. And if you can't think of a single name, then ask Jesus to give you a heart for those who don't yet know him. So, Father God, we just commit that person that has maybe come to mind. We pray your blessing upon them, Lord. We long that many more will come to find out about the good news of Jesus. We thank you for this Alpha course gives an opportunity, an easier, more relaxed opportunity for them not even to have to come to church, but just come into the hall and just hear a little bit about the difference that Jesus can make. So, Lord, we ask and pray that you will... This church will be like a magnet, Lord God, and that people will want to come and discover the good news that is Jesus Christ. And Lord, help us as Christians to 
take every opportunity you have to invite someone along. Lord, may we not leave it to others, but may we, would you use each one of us, Lord God, to be somebody who can give an invitation and point someone to the Alpha Course and to you, Lord Jesus. So Father, we pray your grace, your blessing upon us and upon those invitations as we give them out and as we invite people over the weeks ahead in Jesus' name. And Lord, while we're praying, we also pray for the whole city of Bangkok and the nation of Thailand, Lord God. We never tire of praying for Bangkok. We never tire, Lord, of praying for Thailand because the nation and the city are on your heart, Lord God, on the very heart of God. And Lord, I pray that you will keep us as intercessors, keep us in the place of prayer because we long to see the transformation, Lord God, that only you can bring. So Father, we pray even this day, removing a stirring of your Holy Spirit in the hearts and minds of those who are yet to discover that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Father, moved by your Spirit, we ask and pray in this nation and across the nations of the world to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Great, we're going to have our Bible readings now. And uh, so we're just starting a new series. We finished the book of Nehemiah. We did the last one on Nehemiah, leadership of Nehemiah, uh, last week. And if you missed any and you wanted to catch up on them, you can go onto the church website um, and you will be able to, if you click on worship services, you can see all the the previous uh, services and you can listen to the talk if you missed it and you want to catch up on it. So that's always available on the website. So we've finished Nehemiah, we're just about to start a series of five on the book of James, taking one chapter of James uh, just week by week. So thank you for coming to read James chapter one. The The first Bible reading is from James one, verses one to 12. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Greetings, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sister, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers with the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their businesses. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second Bible reading is from James chapter 1, verses 13 to 27. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chooses to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruit of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, 
and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that keeps freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless, faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you for those Bible readings. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. And Lord, as we begin, uh, look at a, a new book of the Bible, the book of James. I ask and pray that you'll speak to us through it. Lord, I know you will challenge us through it, Lord, because James is a very challenging book. But I ask and pray, Lord God, that we will be open to hear what you want to speak to each one of us by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, may we allow you to go deep. May we allow you to exhort us, challenge us, correct us, uh, encourage us, Lord. We ask and pray, Father, that you would draw near to each one of us now and speak to us by the power of your Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, the, James chapter 1. James is a, an interesting book in the Bible. James is... The book of James is really all about practical Christianity. It's, it's about how to live out our faith in the nitty-gritty of everyday life. It's not just a, a theological, sort of airy-fairy, sort of in the, in the skies account. It is absolutely on the road, direct, practical. James is very direct. He's very clear-cut. He doesn't, he's not wishy-washy. He is straight to the point. He doesn't mess around. He is very, very direct and very, very clear. In fact, in the book of James, there are 50, over 50 commands or imperatives. In other words, things you must do. You know, this, that, you must, this, must, and the other. And that is James. He's, you would not impress James by a, a lots of Bible knowledge. That would not impress James. What would impress James is if you were living your everyday Christian life in a way that Jesus wants you to. So he's, yes, of course, theology is important, but just you can believe theology and it makes no difference to your life. James is totally practical, absolutely in your face, and he will say, he, he, he really has little time for Christians that are shallow, Christians that are half-hearted, Christians that are lukewarm, Christians that are just, you know, in, ineffective. He is straight down the line, and that's why actually it's not the easiest book. And I want to say well done for all you to all you being here for a sermon that's entitled, Do Persevere. Um, perseverance is, is not a, a quality that most of us really want to have to grow in and get better at, but actually that's what James is going to tell us uh, in a moment as we look at this passage. So really direct, really clear cut, and straight to the point, James. Doesn't pull any punches at all. Let's just have a look at how the book of James starts. The very first verse, and very first point really Know that your identity is in Jesus. Know that your identity is in Jesus. James 1 and verse 1 says this. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's his opening line. And it tells us about who is writing the letter. And I find it absolutely fascinating how James introduces himself. He says, there's no... There's no great title, the Apostle James, or 
the right reverend James. There are no letters after his name. There's no great big title. There's no, do you know who I am? I'm a really important VIP person. He just says, James. And then what does he say? He says, I am a servant, a servant of God. Wow. And he doesn't just say, I'm a servant of God. He says, I'm a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you might think, Matthew, just saying the obvious. It may, yes, it is obvious, but, but actually, let me ask you, when was the last time that you said hello to someone you've not met before, and rather than saying, well, I'm a captain of industry, or I'm a, I went to this school, I've got these qualifications, I'm this, that, or the other, when was the last time you introduced yourself to someone and said, I'm a servant, I'm a servant? And you know the word servant here can equally be translated slave. Have any of us... I'm a slave. I'm a servant. That is what James is doing right from the off. And he's a servant, first of all, of God. He's a servant of God. A servant was somebody who who had to do their master's bidding. They didn't have a choice. But he's a servant who wants to follow the master. He's not been press ganged into it. He says, I'm a servant, a slave of God. And not just God in a general sense. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Wow. Immediately we get something incredibly impressive about James. He's not, I'm a, I'm a pastor, I'm a, I'm a vicar, i got the title Rev or anything like that at all. Doesn't cut any ice with him at all. I'm a servant. I'm a slave of Jesus. I'm a full in, 100% all out committed follower of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Wow. You see, James, his very identity Jesus, it is, is not about his upbringing, schools he went to, his qualifications, the job he does, or anything else at all. The only identity that matters to James is his connectivity, his relationship with Jesus Christ. Nothing else matters. Wow. Just imagine, just imagine, if we as a church started going around thinking like that, realizing that, hey, you know, I'm a slave of Jesus, you know, um, what's Jesus been up to you today? How have you been serving God? I'm a slave of Jesus. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. The only thing that matters to James, and this is why he's so straight down the line, it is the only thing that matters in his life. His possessions, his job, and nothing else matters apart from how His identity is totally, totally committed and linked to to Jesus. I think that's impressive. Yeah? You're allowed to shout out aloud, amen, if you want to. Um, But that's that's who he is. That's how he introduces himself. Uh, And I think really, really helpful and really challenging, actually. I'm challenged by that. Uh, We all should be challenged by that. So, you know, when we have uh, tea and coffee and refreshments afterwards... You can shake someone by the hand and say, I'm a servant of Jesus. You know, Jesus has totally changed my life. Jesus has transformed me. In fact, the only thing that matters is Jesus. And you know, if we've got alpha leaflets on our hand, I don't mind whether you never speak to me again, but I just want to tell you, I want to tell you about the Jesus who changed my life. That is James. His identity is in Jesus. Okay, that's just a first introductory point. Um, the second one is this. God wants to encourage you when facing tough times. God wants to encourage you when facing tough times. Still in verse 1. And again, we're not going to get through the whole letter, so don't worry. We're just going to, lots of things we could pull out from it, just going to pull out some. You might go home and do your own studies and get some other points that you find helpful. But the second point is this. God wants to encourage you when going through tough times. James 1 verse 1 still to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Do you know, it's easy just to quickly gloss over the beginning of a letter or something like that. But actually, it's worth taking a bit of time, especially on this first session, as we work out who James is and who he writes to. Well, James, most scholars would say he was almost definitely, you know, the sort of stepbrother, as it were, half-brother of Jesus. But it's difficult to be 100% clear, but there are a number of James in the Bible, and it's a little bit uh, intricate which one's doing what sometimes. Uh, scholars don't all totally agree on that one. But he is, but, but yes, so that, that's James. And who's he writing to? 
James, he's writing to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. James is writing to basically everyone. He, James was, was a, the, um, became a main church leader in Jerusalem in the early church. He was probably the church leader there for about 30 years. He was an eyewitness of the resurrection. Um, and he's writing not just his little congregation in the church that he's pastoring. He's actually writing to everyone who's been dispersed. A lot of them, not all, but a lot of them have been dispersed to the four corners, uh, to everyone. And why have they been dispersed? Well, some of them just because they live further out and outside of Israel and Jerusalem. But many of them he's writing to because they are being persecuted for being a Christian. Many of them have lost homes, they've lost families, they've lost loved ones, they've lost everything that was precious to them. And James is writing a letter to them. And do you know, one of the privilege, privileges for all of us here at Christchurch Bangkok is that we actually have in our midst quite a number of people that are really facing persecution for being Christians in their own nation and have had to, have had to, to, to get away for safety just as the people who received James's letter would have received it. You know, they've been scattered, they've been persecuted, they've had to flee, some of them for their lives. And it would have been really, I can't imagine what it would have been like just leaving with almost nothing. But praise God, we've got a number in our own fellowship for whom that is the case. And I, I think it's a wonderful thing, and we are all absolutely equal in God's sight. Isn't it wonderful that uh, uh, we're still able to gather together to worship Jesus in this way? So he's, he's writing to people that are going through really tough times, really hard times, and it's not easy. And then let's move into the third point. Let trials increase your joy. And again, we're still only on verse 2. We haven't got in, even into the meat of the letter yet. Let trials increase your joy. Verse 2, James writes, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. It's interesting. I wonder how many of us have ever started a letter like that. I'm a servant of Jesus. And guys, and he knows, he knows that they're going through hard times. A lot of the Christians he's writing to. And what does he say? Consider it pure joy, whenever you face all the trials that you're going through. I find that extraordinary. I, I don't know if anyone is aware of the, what the word means oxymoron. An oxymoron is a, a, a two-word phrase that contains contradictions, a two-word phrase that contains a contradiction. That's an oxymoron. So, for example, uh, jumbo shrimp would be maybe an oxymoron. Fresh frozen might be an oxymoron. How could it be fresh and it has been frozen in the freezer for a long time? Um, what are some others? Um, good grief. You know, people say, like, good grief. Good grief? Surely that's an oxymoron. It seems to contain an oxymoron. Some people would say police intelligence is uh, an oxymoron, but that's uh, <clears throat> not appropriate. But here, James uses this oxymoron, this two words contradiction. He says, trials and pure joy. Surely they do not go together. They don't fit. Imagine starting a letter, writing to, to people that you know are going through it, really under the cosh, and you say, consider it pure joy whenever you're going through all those trials. Wow, this is James, straight up, in the first, second, second line. He's straight there. He's not, you know, fluffy or anything like that at all. He's, he's straight to the point. And he says, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. Trials vary in all, trials come in all sorts of forms. Trials can come from in our personal relationships. We can have financial trials. We can have uh, trials, um, bereavement trials. We can have personal, personal health trials. Trials come in all shapes and, and, and sizes. There's not one size, but a trial really, from this point of view that James is writing, is, is any circumstance in life that puts your confidence in God through the fire. So a trial really is anything in life that we might go through, and it could be, any, it could be a flat tire. Uh, it could be anything that puts our confidence in God through the fire. 
But obviously the people that James is writing to, it's major stuff that they're facing, fleeing their homes and um, losing loved ones and all of those sorts of things. And if you think about fire, what does fire do? It does test things. If, if you have a precious metal, gold or silver, you don't have any gold and silver, but you heat it up and you get it to a real red-hot temperature so you can draw off all the impurities and make it pure. And actually what James is just beginning to say is, when we go through trials, you can know the joy of Jesus in the trial if you will allow him to walk with you through whatever trial you're going through. And to God, you and I are more important than the most precious of precious metals. He wants our lives to be refined, to be purified, to get rid of the dross, skim off all the dross. And that's what the letter of James is all about. It's a letter about how we can become more mature in Christ, how going deeper in our relationship with Jesus. And let me tell you, going through the fire is not pleasant. It's not easy. Think of a number of people in the Bible who went through fires. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego literally went through the fiery furnace that King Nebuchadnezzar had heated up for them. And amazingly, they, they came through it unscathed. Daniel, in the lion's den, is going through a trial, a fiery ordeal, and he comes out fine. A trial that Joseph faced in the, in the Old Testament. He's wrongly accused of something he hasn't done. He spends two years in prison for something he's never even done. And he goes through all of the things and sold into slavery and goodness knows what else. He goes through incredible trials and a fiery ordeal. But in all of those counts, what happens is they have been made stronger and more purer and more like Jesus and have been growing in their relationship with God, not running away from God. So a challenge for all of us is, and James doesn't say, if you face trials, he says, when you face trials. There are always trials to be faced in the Christian life. And there was an army chaplain who had on a sign on his door and it said, uh, if you have any troubles or trials, come in and tell me about them. If you don't have any troubles or trials, come in and tell you how you managed to do it. We will all face trials and they come in all sorts of different signs and some of us are tested um, you know, much more than others. Christians aren't exempt from trials. Sometimes Christians think, oh, I'm a Christian, nothing should ever go wrong, nothing should ever happen. But actually, that's not the case. We should, James says, not if, but when you face trials. We will face trials and, and those sorts of testing times. And, and the key thing about being a Christian is how we deal with the trials of life when they come along. So let me ask you a question, and I'll ask myself a question too. When you face a real testing time, and for some people, and for the people James is writing to, their lives are at stake. They are fleeing for persecution for their lives. Um, some have lost everything, and others of us, maybe we don't have that amount of trial, but we've got other trials. Let's all think about what trials perhaps we have faced or we are facing, or even we might face in the future, how do we respond? How do we deal? How is our walk with Jesus when the going gets tough in the Christian life and those tests, those trials come along? What James wants to see in all those that are following Jesus is that they're following Jesus well during the trials. Sadly, sometimes Christians can think, I'm a Christian, I sh this should never happen to me. Um, I should, nothing should ever go wrong. God doesn't love me anymore. He's given up on me. I'm going to... And they actually, instead of going deeper in their faith, they start losing their faith. Please don't do that. And if anyone has had a trial that's rocked, then don't allow that to, 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 to rock you. James is clear on this. He says, consider it pure joy, my brother. It it's, it's, seems impossible. How can a trial that we're going through seem like a pure joy? But that is the encouragement and exhortation that James gives to us to, to experience and to know and to ask God's help for during those, those difficult times. So, trials come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And this is challenge. James is a, a book of challenging practical Christianity. Uh, 
how do we deal? And that's why when we know that other people are going through trials or hard times, we should be looking out and reaching out and, and doing all that we can to support and walk with someone because we never know who's the next person maybe to go through a trial or a testing time. So <clears throat> that's what it says. And <clears throat> that's the sort of third point. Fourth point is this. Jesus suffered many trials for you. Jesus suffered many trials for you. Now, we might often feel sorry for us, ourselves when we're going through a trial. We might feel whatever we, however it is. But let me tell you the incredible, amazing good news about Jesus Christ, the God that Christians know and love and worship, is this, that actually Jesus is the God himself who went through every form of trial, every form of suffering for you and for me. Jesus isn't a God who's just distant from us in heaven just looking and seeing what's happening. Jesus is the God who came from heaven to earth, who lived on this earth for 33 years. And let me tell you, Jesus is the only one who did not have to go through any trials. But he chose to go through trials. Why? For you and for me. Because he's the God of the universe who loves us, who cares for us, and is so committed to us that Jesus himself was willing to leave his majesty and his throne in heaven, and Jesus was willing to come and spend time on this earth. And what sort of trials and sufferings did Jesus go through? If we read Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, the suffering servant, we haven't got time to do that now, but so many things. We know that Jesus was ridiculed, he was mocked, he was ambushed and attacked by the Pharisees almost every day of his ministry. They're coming to undermine him, trying to trip him up, trying to get him, you know, to make a mistake uh, all the time. Uh, he's, he's, he goes through incredible shame as he's stripped almost naked on the cross, and yet he's a God who loves us and cares for us. What shame he went through, what it must have been like for him to see his mum and his disciples watching him literally get nailed, nailed to a cross. That is the God that Christians know and love and follow and worship. And let me tell you, whatever trials we are going through, take great courage from the trials that Jesus has gone through for you and for me. And Jesus went through the trial of crucifixion, being nailed to a cross and losing his life. Wow, that's a God who understands our suffering, a God who came and actually has partaken in this world and given us the example and model to follow. That's why James can write what seems incredible. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind. As Christians, we have a God who understands suffering completely. A God who has experienced suffering himself, even though he didn't need to, in order to deal with the sin of the world, to deal with my sin and your sin, in order to make it possible to have that connection, commitment to to God. That is the good news of Jesus. That is the good news. So God understands our suffering. When we think that no one else understands, no one knows what I'm going through, Jesus does because Jesus was here and literally wore the t-shirt of our lives and he understands and so it's great to get encouragement from remembering our relationship with Jesus and so when we're going through those testing times don't don't drift from God don't drift from God some Christians do sadly Um, don't drift go the opposite way get closer and closer to Jesus than you've ever been. Like James, I'm a servant, I'm a slave of Jesus, and I'm going through trials. And just, to, so, so Jesus is our, is our, our model and example here of um, suffering for us. And just, just so that we don't think that James is just an academic theologian writing a, a letter from his study without having any reality in his life, let me tell you, and sorry, this is, I'm just preaching the scripture. This seems a little bit heavy. It's because um, it's a chapter one. Other chapters will be, will be different, but I'm just sharing some things that are here. But let me tell you this. What happens to James at the end of his life? Um, James, he's, he's been a, a pastor for about 30 years, and 
I think Nero is uh, on the throne, but it's really the Pharisees, it's the religious elite that do not like him because he's talking too much about Jesus. He's telling people too much about Jesus. And it's always difficult to be completely confident of the exact way that some of the different disciples and early apostles died. But, but there are accounts, Josephus is one, but others too, that, that give an account of how, how he died. And it seems that they wanted to get James, this pastor of the church, to recant his faith. Look, just be more Jewish and don't, don't talk about Jesus. You know, leave that bit out. And it would seem that at the Passover, big festival in Jerusalem, they took James up to the, you know, a, a point in the temple balcony where he could tell the whole crowd, they wanted him to say that he was going to really recant his faith. But he did the opposite. And he said, Jesus Christ is your saviour, he's your Lord, he's your king, he's your God. The Pharisees didn't like him. And someone apparently pushed him off and he fell. But he wasn't killed when he got to the bottom. His legs were broken, but he was, he was still alive. And so they started to stone James to death. And someone, it would appear, had a club and eventually just hit him on the head and he died. James is somebody who's written this, this letter, but he doesn't just walk the walk, he talks the talk. He was somebody who had experienced and did experience the ultimate uh, giving up of his life. So he's someone that we can um, take credibility from in what he writes and what he says. Whew. Okay, <clears throat> great. Take a deep breath and we'll continue. Just, uh, we're nearly there, but just one more thing. Um, and we haven't really used this word yet because we haven't quite got there, but uh, perseverance, fifth point. F perseverance promises a reward in heaven. Perseverance promises, perseverance in, in God promises a reward in heaven. James 1 verse 12. He says, blessed are those who persevere under trial because when they have stood the test, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. I'm thinking, Matthew, it's not getting any lighter. If anything, it's getting a bit heavier. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to preach the, the, what, what's written there, and I felt it was good to focus on the area of trials and testings. Perseverance, what an unfashionable quality. How many of us have ever said, oh, I really want to grow in my perseverance? It's a godly quality, really godly quality. We know the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and we probably think, yep, I'll have some of that. I'll have some, some joy and some love and some peace in my life. Perseverance? Perseverance is hard work. You know, you're probably not going to fill a church if you start preaching on perseverance. James does, right from the off. First chapter of his letter, he's right in there. Line, second sentence, right there he is right there as I said he's very practical very direct perseverance it's a quality that is good for us to think about a little bit and I'm sure that I'm not very good on my perseverance I hope you, you're much better than I am in persevering but James is talking about persevering in our walk with God and during the hard times of life. That's what James is about. And what he says is not only do we keep our eyes on Jesus, fix our eyes on Jesus, but actually what he says is, read it again, the second bit, blessed are those who persevere. How many of us think that per when we have to persevere in hard times, it's a blessing? God says it is a blessing when we persevere with him, with Jesus. Blessed are those who persevere under trial because when they have stood the test, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. The crown of life. This is where James at the beginning, I'm a servant of Jesus. He is so, his identity is so in Jesus that actually he'll persevere whatever happens. If he gets pushed off the top of the temple and gets beaten up, he'll persevere in Jesus. He'll walk the walk and he'll He'll talk the talk and he'll walk the walk. Persevering is just one of those things that is not easy to do. But James says there's a crown of life promised to all those who persevere. A crown of life. What a beautiful picture that is. Do you know, 
Jesus himself says to his disciples, I long to show you my glory, the glory that I had bef- you know, before the world began. Jesus longs to take every Christian by the hand and show them around heaven. Honestly, Jesus, is, he's gone through the shame and the beatings and the crucifixion for us. Jesus is waiting and longing. He is so wanting to take each one of us by the hand and actually give us a guided tour of heaven when we meet him face to face. That's why Jesus went through all he went through in this life for us. He is so excited about taking us around heaven. And there's a crown of life promised to all those who will keep persevering, keep walking with Jesus, not give up, not get sidetracked, not get distracted, not let every, all our other identities take, come to the fore, and not our identity in Jesus. So, perseverance. Um, a really godly quality and something that probably we don't, uh, we don't share about as much as we should do. I've got time. Final point with, a, with an illustration for this one. <laughs> and the point is, be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. Be a doer of a word, not just a hearer. Say, so, just a little illustration that um, James mentions in his letter. You can probably all see what this is. So I hope it's not dazzling anybody. It's a mirror. Okay. Um, I'm sure we all looked in the mirror this morning before we... Uh, came to church, it's just a mirror. Um, And James is so passionate in his walk with Jesus. He's so committed in his walk with Jesus that he, as I said, if you went to James for counseling, he would be no nonsense. Um, He would be direct and straight to the point. And what he says is, and we'll see this later on in the book of James as well, um, let me read the scripture. James says, James 1.22, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And that's why James is someone who doesn't just want us to have head knowledge about being a Christian. He's bothered about what our Christian life looks like for real. What's our lifestyle like? And he says, because if we're not really willing to, to you know, go through those trials with Jesus, to persevere with Jesus, to actually put our faith into action, not just be hearers of the word, but actually doers of it, then we're like a person who just looks in a mirror, oh, that's what I look like, and then walks off and forgets what they look like. And James isn't going to have any of that. And even though he's writing to people, you know, you think his tone might have been a little bit softer, a little bit more gentle, perhaps, to those going through hard times. But he is so insistent and so clear keep walking with Jesus whatever the cost whatever however hard the road is whatever the trials are don't be like somebody just cursory little you know shallow Christian has a look do my own thing he says no he says be somebody who doesn't just hear the word but actually lives it out in your everyday life and James is somebody who did live his life out uh, to the full and pay the ultimate price at the end of his life as well for following Jesus. So, just a number of things. Um, trials and testings happen in our life in order to strengthen our faith, not to weaken our faith, but to strengthen it. Trials and testings happen in our life to mature us as Christians, to make us go deeper in our walk with God. And trials and testings happen and will bring us a great reward in heaven. So, as we just think about James chapter 1, and you can read it for yourself, it's only five chapters, the book of James, and God will speak to you as you look at it and are open to it. And I've only just picked out a few points, there's so many more points we could pick out from James chapter 1. So you can go back and look at them, pull out some of your own points from that perhaps. But as we just um, finish, let's just uh, close our eyes maybe. Just close our eyes and just think, God, what are, you, what are you saying to me about perseverance, about trials and testings? Maybe we're aware of some trials and testings we've been through and perhaps we didn't come out of them very well. We just need to say sorry to God and just ask him to take our hand now and walk with us.
Maybe for some of us, we're going through some real testing trials. It might be a health situation. It might be any sort of situation. It might be a persecution situation. Give your trial, place your trial into the hands of Jesus. Know that Jesus suffered for you. And ask Jesus to take you by the hand and lead you through your trial. I have a picture of um, that fiery furnace of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And if you remember, it said, Nebuchadnezzar the king's looking on. And three people put in the fire. But then he said, I see a fourth person. And he looks like a god. Jesus was walking with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego through their trial and testing time. And Jesus wants you to know that he is walking with you and he will walk with you. But walk closely with him. Stay close to Jesus in the trial. Never take your eyes off Jesus. Yes, there's practical things we need to do, but... And and I just pray, Lord God, as we're just responding to you, Lord God, and maybe thinking of trials in our own lives... I pray, Father God, for any trials we have gone through, we are going through, we will go through, Lord. I pray that we will know the joy, the joy of God's presence, the joy of Jesus, even in those difficult times, Lord. Would, would they, even though they're, they're bitter and hard on the outside, may they be sweet, Lord God, on the inside with you. And thank you for the promise of a crown of life to all of us who will persevere and will keep going and not give up. Oh, Lord, I just pray for your encouragement, Lord God, for any of us, every one of us, that we might each know your encouragement, even today, from any trials, any testings we're going through. Lord, would you come and encourage us? Would you come and strengthen us? Would you come and fill us afresh, Lord God, I pray. And Lord, may we be those that look out for others too, not just ourselves, but to look out for others too. And we pray this this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Well done for sitting through um, not a light topic, but a deeper topic, but a topic that if we'll allow Jesus to come close to us in, hopefully one that we'll find either now or in the future helpful. We're going to continue to respond to God. We're going to take up the offering, uh, and we're going to sing a song of uh, worship and praise to God. So can I invite you to stand?
that uh, they will be a blessing to many, both here locally and to the end of the world. And Father, thank you for all of these gifts given in different ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Please do take a seat. It's in the service sheet on page five, but it'll be on the screen behind. Let's uh, confess our sins as we just make sure that we're right with God. And it might be that there are some trials we've gone through and we, we didn't get it right. Let's just, if there is, let's just confess those to God and then move on, knowing that we can know the presence of Jesus with us. So just a moment just to reflect, and then we'll pray this prayer together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have gone our own way, not loving you as we should, nor loving our neighbors as ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Father, forgive us. Help us to love you and our neighbors, and enable us to live for your honor and glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's say this confidently and uh, with a voice of proclamation. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night Jesus was betrayed at supper with his friends. Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is a bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine. Jesus gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So if you love Jesus as your Savior and Lord, then please do come and um, receive the bread and wine. Uh, or if you prefer to come just for a prayer of blessing, we'd love to just pray God's blessing upon you. And just responding to God uh, as we share communion as well. And having thought about James chapter 1, it just might be that we've got some trials, we've got some testings that we're going through, and it might be that as we come to receive bread and wine, we need to just give those trials and testings to Jesus and say, Jesus, please, would you draw close to me? Would you come and help me? Would, you, would your grace be upon me? In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay.
Jesus broken for you. The body of 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 Jesus broken for you. God bless you. The body of Jesus broken for you. And I just pray God's blessing upon his child, Lord God. I just pray you will have your hand upon his child. You will guide, you will bless, you protect, and cause his child to grow up strongly in the knowledge and love of you. Amen. The body of Jesus broken for you. The body of Jesus broken for you. The body of Jesus broken for you.
Father God, we want to say thank you so much that we follow and we worship a God who has suffered for us. Thank you that you understand what suffering is like in all sorts of ways. And we thank you that we can have confidence that when we pray and talk to you, Lord Jesus, that you hear our prayers, that you will answer our prayers, and that you will walk with us through whatever fires um, the future may have. And I thank you that that is absolutely something we can have great confidence in. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice of yourself upon the cross. Thank you for being going through all that you've done for our accounts. And we're here to say thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for the bread and wine that we've received. And pray that you will strengthen us through it, Lord, by the power of your Spirit. Amen. Man, we can have a final song, hymn of worship now. So I can invite you to stand as we sing.
Amen. Please do take a seat. Just uh, before we finish, just a reminder of one or two things that are happening in the church, all in the news sheet here, so hopefully you've got a copy of that. And just a couple of things to particularly flag up. One is that we're looking to uh, recruit a new children and youth ministry leader, and so please be praying about that. Pray that God will send the right person uh, or raise up uh, the right person from here. And if you know anywhere that might be good to advertise that particular post because you have a particular uh, relevant place, please uh, have a word with uh, Oki and uh, he can give you the job description and you can have it be known. Or if you know anyone who you think is just the right person for that role, then again, you can contact us, we can give you the, the job description and uh, you can pass it on. So let's be praying for that role that, um, that God will guide and lead um, both whoever it is that he might be calling to come here and also us as a church. Then also, a number of things happening during the week. On Tuesday, a new Bible series are starting up, which Bob is going to be taking uh, by, uh, via Zoom. So if you'd like to join this particular Bible study group, then get the Zoom link from, uh, from the church, and we can send that to you. And it's going to be a series looking at uh, the Sermon on the Mount, so Matthew's, Matthew chapters 5 to 7. Uh, so that will be well worth being a part of. So anyone who can make that, that's the Tuesday evening. Uh, details are in here. Then Wednesday, daytime at 1 p.m. through in the prayer room, there's a Bible study, daytime Bible study that happens. So everyone's welcome to come along to that. Then on Thursdays, we have revival prayer meeting every 12 noon on a Thursday in the prayer room again, praying for this nation particularly and the nations of the world, praying outwardly for God to, to so prayers and intercession. So if that's a focus that you have or you'd like to learn how to pray, uh, then do please do come along and uh, that's 12 noon every Thursday for revival prayer meeting. And I think probably the... Any other thing to particularly flag up? Again, just a final reminder, Alpha. Mentioned it early on in the service, just mentioned it again, um, unashamedly, because this could change somebody's life because it's all about Jesus. So please, there's a welcome desk as you go out, just on the left-hand side. I think it's still there. It was there when you came in as well. So if you would like to pick up any of these Alpha leaflets from there, um, and again, those you may be prayed about during a service you want to invite along, keep praying for those persons. Keep praying for other people that maybe God gives you. And have the confidence just to invite them. If James were here giving the announcements, not me, he wouldn't be quite as polite as I'm perhaps being. He would be more blunt and in your face. Um, I don't know what he'd say, but you know what I mean. You get the drift of James. He's really straight to the point. So use these invitations and let's pray for harvest and for many people to come. And God will want to use you to bring somebody that you know, that no one else will know. You might be the only person that you can give one of these invitations to. So be praying about that. Take some as you leave. And thank you for that. I think that's about it, other than to say, you know, if you're coming, you, you, you're relatively new in Bangkok and you'd just like to know a little bit more about the church, especially if you're going to be here for a little while, then do give, our, give your name so we can let you know what's going on and how you can get involved in the church. Please don't rush away afterwards. Through in, by the church hall there, there's tea, there's coffee, there's soft drinks, and an opportunity to talk and fellowship together as well. So don't rush away. And... I'm just going to finish with a word of prayer. I know that it's a new school season starting for some, uh, both teachers uh, and also for students as well. For some, it's uh, universities or colleges as well. So let's be praying for all those we know in the church, both the children, teachers, those going to university or the, maybe starting or maybe it's the next year there. Let's just pray as we finish and let's keep praying God's blessing upon one another. So Father God, we thank you for your presence with us today. We ask and pray, Lord, your blessing upon each and every member of the church, Lord. I ask and pray we might each know your blessing, your presence, and Lord, any testings or trials that we might have uh, this week or in the coming while, Lord God, I pray that you will steal us and prepare us for those, Lord God, that we might walk as well as we possibly can through those difficult times. Father, for those that are maybe going up a grade at school, uh, we ask and pray blessing every child uh, at school, some already at school, but others starting uh, soon. Lord, we ask and pray your blessing upon each child, each young person here in this church.
And Father, those going, uh, teachers as well, Lord, those starting new teaching terms, we pray your blessing upon every teacher uh, and lecturer, Lord God, that they would have grace and wisdom and guidance from you. And those at university or starting university, Lord God, again, we pray that you will walk with each of them, Lord God, that they will know you walking with them uh, day by day. And so, Father, for each and every one of us, we ask and pray we might know your blessing upon our lives, your Holy Spirit filling us daily and inspiring us to walk with you well in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I want to say God bless you and uh, great that you've been here today. Please don't rush away. Please do come and have some uh, fellowship and something to drink just through uh, by the Lee Hall. God bless you.